Hey guys, this video is going to cover the physical pendulum and very first off the bat, it's very similar to a simple pendulum. Now remember the simple pendulum has a mass at the end of a negligible mass that connects it to the axis of rotation. The physical pendulum, the only difference is that the mass is distributed throughout from the axis of rotation to the bob at the end. So what I think would be helpful to first do is pause the video and draw a uh, torque diagram for a simple pendulum with the restoring force. Hopefully this should be pretty easy because we've already done it. Um, then draw a torque diagram for the physical pendulum and determine the difference between the two. So go ahead and pause and do that. All right, so if we're doing a torque diagram, remember the only difference between the torque and the force diagram is that the torque diagram takes into account where the force is applied from the axis of rotation. So if we draw the torque diagram for the simple pendulum, we know we have mg pointing straight down. Now I'm going to eliminate that one just to show the, the only restoring force that we're looking at is the component mg sine theta. Now that will be exactly the same for the physical pendulum. The only difference is that for the physical pendulum, because we have a distributed mass, we will have the force acting at the center of mass. Now here I picked just a uniform, a uniformly dense uh, rod that so it has a geometric, um, its geometric center is the same as its center of mass. And so the force mg sine theta would just be applied right here. All right, next go ahead and pause the video again and try to write a uh, what the torque is for each of those two objects, the physical pendulum and the simple pendulum. And then we will compare the difference between the two. All right, go ahead and pause. All right, so for the simple pendulum, we would have um, mg sine L, um, which L being the length of the string. Now I made this physical pendulum, the rod, it's the same length as that. All right, so we'll keep that in mind. So here on the physical pendulum side, instead of writing uh, the force times R being mg sine theta times L, it would be mg sine theta times L over two, or we could just put, let's say H, for example. The main difference is that you have to show that the force is acting at a different location from the axis of rotation. All right, so then I could set each of these expressions equal to torque equals I alpha and solve for alpha. Um, now keep in mind that for small angles, which is what we're dealing with here, sine theta is the same thing as approximately theta. And so I could rewrite the expression this way. All right guys, so to figure out the difference of, for the period for the simple pendulum versus the uh, physical pendulum, I'm just gonna start by doing this. Uh, this is kind of a quick little review uh, piece. For the oscillating spring, we had uh, for its position at any given time, we had this, right? So we had its uh, x position equals x max or the amplitude times cosine of 2 pi f t plus phi. And remember that then this is the main point for trying to extrapolate the information we're looking for now, which is what is the period for the physical pendulum is this 2 pi f piece, right? Remember this was the angular frequency. And we found that the angular frequency for the, um, the spring happened to be um, root k over m okay very similarly when we were going through um, the pendulum the simple pendulum we found that the angular frequency for the simple pendulum would be root g over l all right and it came from as well looking at that relationship between what's that coefficient to the t uh, value. So here the position function, remember it would be this. 
So it looks very, very similar, right? And then we, we were able to take that um, angular frequency term. So what do you think, pause the video for a second, and uh, what do you think the angular frequency would be for the simple pendulum? So try to like mimic what it would have to be, maybe starting from the differential equation, um, or maybe if you're able to see it even from here, go ahead and try that. All right, so let's just start by I'm going to use the differential equation um, as a starting point, and I'm going to do the simple pendulum on the left, and then I'll do the physical pendulum on the right. And let's just take a look to see what the period equation would eventually come out to be, and we can compare the differences. So on the left-hand side, if I, if I write my differential equation for the simple pendulum, I have this, right? So d squared theta dt squared plus g over l theta equals zero. And remember the solution to this equation was theta equals um, theta max, or the amplitude times cosine root g over l times t, and then plus v. I'm gonna leave the plus v out. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. And then we can do the physical pendulum on the next side. And that one's going to be, um, if we use what we did a few slides ago, we would have d squared theta dt squared plus, um, and then this would be, the coefficient would be m, g, and I think I used h instead of l over 2, just to make it kind of more generic, over i and that would be our solution right there. So then that means that the angular frequency, because keep in mind here, we've got this angular frequency right here, which is two pi f or root g over l. The angular frequency therefore on the right would have to be um, root um, m, g h over i all right all right so we're in the home stretch here uh, let me just kind of shrink everything down again all right so just a, a recall real quick here um, I'm gonna do the on the left here this is for the simple pendulum again remember angular frequency is 2 pi f which we just have is equal to omega which is equal to root g over l and then if I sol solve for f, um, remember I would get f equals one over two pi times root g over l, or period equals the inverse of that, which is two pi root l over g. Okay, so if I'm gonna do that over on the right-hand side for um, the physical pendulum, I'm gonna put here uh, two pi f which is the angular frequency is equal to root m times g times h or l or whatever you, l over two or whatever you wanna use there over i, okay? You can see the, the frequency equation would be f equals one over two pi times root m g h over i, or the period would have to be t equals two pi times root I over M G H or H is the same thing as saying, remember the distance um, from the axis of rotation to the center of mass. So that could be for various different things. So go ahead and take a look at this. I know it, it is kind of dense guys, just um, put it into perspective. Um, and then let's just take a look at doing this expression for the actual physical pendulum that I gave you before, which is the rod, because this is more generic, of course. All right, guys, so here is the physical pendulum, this one specifically called a rod pendulum. And remember, we are going to be trying to figure out the period of oscillation for this physical pendulum, specifically here, a rod. And we just derived over the course of this video, this equation, t equals two pi times the square root of i over m times g times h, h being the distance from 
the axis of rotation to where the center of mass is located. So let's just plug in the values for these uh, different variables. So we know that a rod um, that is rotating about one end, its moment of inertia is equal to one third ml squared, all right? And then we can say that H in this case, because it's a uniformly dense rod, is equal to L over two, because that's where the force is acting. Okay, and then we've just got to substitute those values in and simplify it. So that would be, uh, let me shrink this down. So that's gonna be equal to uh, two pi times the square root of one third ml squared over mg times L over two. All right, and then if I simplify that down, I get uh, two pi times square root of two L over three G, or two pi times root two thirds L over G. What, what I always find very fascinating about this is that it kind of reminds me of when you had, say, a non-uniformly dense rod and you were trying to figure out what the new symbol uh, or center of mass was, you oftentimes would have, it would be a fraction of the length, right? So when it was a uniformly dense rod, we'd have the center of mass at L over 2. But when it's not, it sometimes comes out to 3 fourths L or 2 thirds L or something like that, right? Depending on how the density is um, kind of spread out. If you look at it this way here in this equation, if we re recall the um, the period for the simple pendulum, it's two pi root L over G. And you, if you compare these two between each other, you can see that um, two thirds L over G is the new um, angular frequency. And that, that's kind of cool because you can take a look at that from that perspective then and say, okay, it's a fraction of L over G and see if you can you know come up with your own little idea of how the that sort of coefficient uh, ratio would be determined that's not something that you really need to know um, very specifically for this basic or not so basic intro course well i hope that was helpful please watch it again i know it's a lot of information and ask questions if you have any